Hi, I'm John Lockwood from John Next Door, and this video tutorial is all about showing you some hints and tips for using masks and stencils to get this beautiful tartan look with this really nice sort of glaze floral over the top. So we're not going to be going through the flowers in this tutorial, but we'll do them at another time. But it's mainly about getting different things and different textures um, using our masks and stencils. So I'm going to be using the tartan mask from the new John Next Door range, which I know strangely doesn't look anything like tartan, but to get a true tartan, what we need are stripes running in opposite directions. So this has been calculated to give us a perfect sort of squared tartan look. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to give this a spray with glue. I'm using a temporary spray adhesive because it's quite fine. And I know normally with a stencil or a mask, you would tape it down. But with this, we don't want, if you can see, they can move quite a bit. And I've used this quite a lot. So I want to make sure it's quite secure. So I just give it a spray. Again, spray into the box that you've got next to you, not just directly into the air like I do. Um, and I'm using um, the largest tag from the John Next Door um, luggage tag set. Um, I think it makes really nice. It's something to practice techniques on. What I often do when I come up with new ideas is to actually cut one of the tags. I'll show you one in the front on. I actually cut some of the tags and I'll actually play on those because if they work out, I can use them on cards or use them on projects. And if they don't, it's a smaller piece of card I've got to work on and I'm wasting. So what I'm going to do is just centrally line the stencil up just to make sure that I get the same amount of space on either side. It's just going to stick it down. So you can see here I've got roughly the same amount of space, but we want a naturalistic look as you'd get with a tartan fabric. So this is nicely adhered. And I'm going to be using iZinc pigment inks. So I'm going to choose three of those colours. And what I want to do is I want complementary colours, but I want a slight contrast. So I'm going to go with the red, the orange and the yellow because we could actually mix the red and the yellow together to get the orange. So they're all on the same sort of scale and it looks, it really works quite well that. And I'm using pigment ink because it beautifully blends. Now I'm going to use finger daubers and these are the Crafts 2 finger daubers that I think are on the website. Terrible for saying that. And I'm going to use this one which is my yellow one. Just because the small size of these means I can really get into the detail areas and I'm too lazy to mask it off. So again, if you're using big ink tools, you would need to mask off some of these areas so you don't go over. But I feel I've got more control with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the central and I've put this central, the mask centrally across the tag with this larger stripe first. And I'm just going to gently shade. Now, I'm not trying to achieve a really smooth look. I want them to blend in. So rather than going quite heavy, I'm going quite light so I get this sort of shaded look. There we go. So that's the orange, which is in the central stripe. I'm then going to go with the yellow, which is the lightest colour, and I'm going to go either side of that. You can tell from the stencil itself there are three different widths of stripe. And each, if you want to do it in three colours, then use a different colour in each width of stripe. So once you get it, if you've got this one, you, it will make sense because you'll see what I mean. The larger stripe is on there three times. The finer stripe is one, two, three, four, five, six times. And the two fine stripes are on twice. Um, but if you use a different colour for each width of stripe, it will just work. You don't need to be very, very clever. So I'm going to go in with the red and I'm going to go on these two finer stripes and again shading it on. There we go, just down there and again just down there. And I'm not trying to get a perfect line, I want it that little bit sketchy. So when I peel this off what I'll have got then is like a stripe, like a deck chair stripe. Um, which again you could leave it at that point, that's the flexibility. But I'm going to take the stencil I'm going to give it another quick spray, so off air I'm giving it a quick spray of glue again. And I'm going to match this on the bottom. So again, make sure it's on my mat. And just get that across the bottom and let the rest rest. And then glue it down. And by using the spray glue, as you can see, I'm not having to use any tape, but it's actually quite well stuck to my work surface. And what that means is, rather than trying to move your hand, you're always better to move your work. 
So don't move yourself, move the piece that you're working on. So we're sticking to the rules again, and we have the widest stripe is in orange. So obviously this time there'll be a little bit more. Grab one, I've broken that one. So I'm just gonna go over. And you'll see now why I wanted it sketchy and not solid, so I can see the other colors through. So widest stripe orange, widest stripe orange in the next one, and then the final widest stripe again in the orange. The narrower stripe is in the yellow. So again, going over all of those narrower stripes. And actually the dauber I've used has got a little bit of green on it as well. So I'm actually getting this really nice yellowy green color. That's the great thing about pigment inks. Because they're slower drying, they blend beautifully together. So we've got those stripes in. I missed a little bit of orange there, let's just correct that. Then I'm gonna go in with the red. So again, just into those double stripes. So I get that nice naturalistic look. Into both of those. And this time when I peel off the mask, you'll be able to see that I've actually got a true tartan. Where I've got different color stripes crossing and where it crosses the orange with the yellowy green, I've got a different color. And each time you're getting different colors, it looks far more realistic. So that's my first layer and I could leave it at that. But what I like to do is add a little bit more texture and definition on it. A tag gives you so much more scope. So I'm going to use this time the Floral Fantasia Mask, which is another what new stencil from the John Next Door range. Again, give it a spray with spray glue. And a quick tip for this, I'm going to place this over, is you may find it's quite difficult to get the glue off the back of your stencils, or like me, I've used ink through this one. I've used some of the eyes ink through this one as well, the ice. So what actually happens is it, it sticks on there and it won't clean properly. The easiest way to clean your stencils is to drop them in a sink of warm water with half a dishwasher tablet. And what that will do is if you leave it to soak for half an hour to an hour, all of this will get eaten off and you should be able to just run it under a tap and give it a wipe down. It's the easiest, best way to clean them. Because I've got this yellow and it's gone a yellowy green, I'm going to use this color, which is the verbena. And this is the new eyes ink ice. This is a translucent, um, gel medium almost so it's a translucent almost paint or color so when i put it on everything that you see through where it goes on you will still see the stripe underneath and i love that because it adds a little bit of definition so i'm just going to put a couple of blobs of that on you can always add but you can't take away so it's always worth adding less and adding more if you need it and to put it on i'm just using this and i'm using my spatula or my palette knife as if I was putting butter on. So a nice thick coating of butter on. You can see there, scrape the excess off. There we go, so got to there. So all of that's at the top. What I'm going to do now, I'm not going to clean my palette knife. I'm going to add some of the white ice to it. So I'm going to put a little bit of that on more towards the bottom. And to start with, I'm going to take that down so I get the almost pure white at the bottom. And then I'm going to take that up into the yellowy green, the verbena color, so that I'll get a beautiful color faded look. So when I peel this one off, we can see there, take it off my mat. This is where I should have brought my pokey tool, but like most crafters, I'll find a way around it. There we go. So when I take that off, you can see there, I've got the beautiful tartan in the background. I've got the lovel lovely floral fantasia going over the top and it sheens from the green to the white. Um, I've got one here that I did earlier in a different color match that is actually dry. So this time I've just used the white over and I used three shades of green and a little bit of yellowy green on that one and I've just used the white and then you would just simply decorate with whatever you've got to hand. I've actually got here a little bit of foliage so always check that your glue is running properly. Well done. So I'm just going to add a little bit of foliage to the 
bottom left hand corner just to ground the flowers and I'm just going to add a couple of flowers on made with my tatty daisy dye let's give them a push in the center there we go we'll pop a third one on just to balance it out and there we've got a tag so we'll pick this one up and we'll show this one but you can see there a very simple tag done very quickly in about five to ten minutes if that and we've got that beautiful sheen of the eye zinc ice but you can see the color through I'm just going to pick up the one that's drying you can see there again with the verbena and the white how we've got the color fading through so you can do these in lots of different colors and shades but a lot of interest and a lot of detail and texture all added to the front of something very quickly and easy simply using some pigment ink and a little bit of the eyes ink ice that's it for this tutorial i hope that's helped um, most of the products that we've seen are available on hachanda's website which is www.hachanda.com and join me again for more tints, tips and inspiration. Take care.